What's up guys? I've gotten requests to do a guide on ADVOU before, but I figured rather than one huge video, then it would be more prudent to split every important element of the tier up into its own separate video so that I could really flesh out each aspect uh, so that uh, you, the viewer with an interest in advanced OU, uh, get a clearer picture of the tier. Uh, this will not just be individual Pokemon within the metagame, but also things like leads, uh, common cores, uh, threats and how to deal with them, team structures, and things of that nature. However, today we're going to start simple. We're going to start with the best Pokemon in the tier, and that is Tyranitar. So, uh, opinions vary on most advanced Pokemon. Like, uh, one guy might think Salamence is just can't live without it. Another guy might think, oh, Mance, yeah, he's okay sometimes. You can go up and down the tier list. Uh, you know, Blissey, Metagross, Swampert, Celebi, Jirachi, Dugtrio, Gyarados, Heracross, Norlax, Regiice. You know, all of those, you know, people have varying opinions on. But the one thing that people never disagree on is that Tyranitar stands above everyone else. And that just speaks to how undeniably powerful it is. So if we take a gander at these handy-dandy viability rankings that we will be visiting very often because they are very useful, then uh, Tyranitar is the sole S rank. And those are some really good Pokemon he's standing above. So uh, if you're more into empirical evidence, then I will now present to you the uh, usage stats for the past five years of official team tournaments, uh, which is when we first got access to this technology. I mean, don't get me wrong. Long before this, then everyone knew Tyranitar was just the best in this tier. However, uh, well, just take a look. So, as you can see, uh, people use a lot of Tyranitar because it's good. And in some of those cases, then, its usage was miles ahead of whatever number two was. So, uh, what makes Tyranitar so good? Well, we can start off by looking at these uh, really beefy stats, with the exception of the speed. However, we'll soon find out that the speed can be fixed and also is not all that terrible. Uh, but yeah, these stats are really good. The typing is unconventional, but it's got a lot of huge key resistances uh, that it can do something about because of its fantastic bulk. So uh, it's also got some bad, uh, some bad weaknesses, no doubt about that. Uh, earthquake weakness sucks, especially with Doug Trio running around. Um, water weakness sucks with how good water types are, but we'll get all into all that later. Now we are going to look over the sets it primarily uses. Uh, small disclaimer, we are not going to go over every possible permutation of Tyranitar. Like we're not going to go over the merits of Thunderbolt. We're just going to go over what it commonly uses, what you can expect to see. Once you get a grasp on this, then you can start exploring those fringe options like counter and whatever else. But for now, we're just going to stick with the standards. Don't worry, it'll still be comprehensive. So, uh, we start with the trademark uh, Tyranitar set. Uh, Dragon Dance. I should take this out because this is not predetermined. Um, yeah, this is the defining advance OU uh, sweeper. Any team that does not have a check to this, or even multiple checks to this, is not good. Uh, this is not a tier where you have to cut corners to make your team effective against certain things. And uh, you, you just can't be weak to this guy. He will sweep you off your butt every single time. 
Or, you know, he'll leave your team battered and left easily picked off by something like Aerodactyl, which uh, their counters often overlap. So by skimping on one, you're skimping on the other. And they're not exactly uncommon on teams together. So uh, something to keep in mind, you want to be prepared for this guy. So uh, what items is it commonly run? Well, the default is, of course, leftovers. Longevity helps it get more dragon dances, which is the goal, as you'll see shortly. Uh, helps it retain defensive use throughout the game. You know, means uh, Celebi hitting lead seed on it. Doesn't mean it's permanently lost 12% um, unless it gets a wish from Blissey or its own lead seed or whatever. You get the idea. Another option for more offensive teams is Lumberry because one way of trying to slow Titar down is by status. Um, Gengar Will O Wisp is a huge one. Uh, and there's even other things like offensive teams that really want to lay the smackdown on the opponent and thus can't really afford to plop a big fat defensive swampert on their team to just soak all their momentum uh, when they're trying to break through defense. So they might do things like run Thunder Wave Zapdos so that while Titar might take it out, at least it's not going to be sweeping their team. And afterwards, it's just slow and easily picked off. Uh, things like Snorlax Body Slam are also uh, key. Uh, and Blissey runs status often as well. Uh, those are the two main ones. Um, some other ones worth mentioning. We're not going to get into every item, um, as I mentioned earlier. But Leechy Berry is for physical offense teams. Um, it often goes with Double Edge. Leechy Berry is... Uh, when you want that extra plus one, because you're not going to be using lefties, and uh, you'll set it up to avoid status, i.e. you're not going to send it in on Gengar and uh, DD as it uses Will-O-Wisp, or Hypnosis. But yeah, Leechy Berry lets you get that huge smack on Swampert, or Flygon, or Claydol, or Metagross, uh, if you run some bulky EVs, which we'll get to in a second. And the last option I'd like to go over is Salak Berry, because as you will see in a second, then Tarantar sometimes needs two speed boosts, um, because it is not that fast. Uh, Dragon Dance goes a long way, but it doesn't go all the way. So uh, Salak Berry is usually not with Double Edge, it's usually with something like Endor. Um, or even something else. Uh, it's nice because it doesn't rely on Dragon Dance to get uh, the speed boost necessarily, by just switching it into a Zapdos Thunderbolt. Uh, means that instead of being outrun into a KO'd and still afraid of Zapdos, now you've suddenly chased it out. Things of that nature. Um, yeah, the other thing I'll mention is stuff like um, the uh, um, boosting items. Remember, they're only 10% in advance, so they're not that big, but Soft Sand uh, for things like Swampert um, and also Metagross. Metagross is a common check on offense. Or a silk scarf with double edge to really hit things hard. Um, yeah, or even hard stone uh, because Skarmory is annoying and it also gives more of a punch when you're mid game rock sledding against things like Snorlax. Uh, yeah, so that's that. And now we'll move over to the fourth move. Uh, DD Tar, 999 times out of 1,000, is going to run these three moves. There are some players who experiment with mixed variants, like purely like one physical move, uh, that being Rock Slide, and then Ice Beam, Fire Blast, HP Grass, that kind of stuff. But this is the bread and butter. This is what you must assume. And then the last move, now that, that changes. So the standard is Hidden Power Bug. Um, this is for Celebi and Claydol, uh, important Pokemon in the metagame. Uh, really sucks when your DD or just gets slowed down and possibly even countered by a bold Celebi. Uh, Claydol is also annoying because it resists Quake Slide and uh, is immune to spikes. And it also naturally hits Flygon. So we've already seen Double Edge. Uh, another move, speaking of Flygon, is Ice Beam, um, because Flygon is so annoying and impossible to kill for the standard d deer that uh, it sometimes dedicates this move just to hitting it. Uh, 
um, which speaks to how important Plygon is and uh, how tough it is to bring down. I mean, sure, it's got other benefits. Like, it also hits clay at all pretty well. Um, kills Salamence without needing to risk a rock slide miss. That's always uh, a nice feeling. But it's primarily for Flygon. And it's primarily for use on Spikes teams because Spikes will do the work against Swampert. Speaking of Swampert, the other common move that Dragonus Rantar often runs, or another, I should say, is Hidden Power Grass because... You know, Swampert is the go-to check for T-Tar on most teams. And if all that's standing in my way is just a Swampert, then why wouldn't I just HP Grass it? And the last standard move on uh, DD-Tar is Taunt. Uh, Skarmory isn't really a great counter, because Rock Slide flinches and hitting Toxic, and you just phase it out, and it takes a ton from plus one Rock Slide and things of that nature. But it can be annoying. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Plus, if you come face-to-face -face with the Skarm, Early in the game, and you're not really going to DD in its face, probably, uh, unless you're playing really aggressively, and then you can taunt and prevent it from spiking or doing annoying things. It can also be good against Leech Seed Celebi. Uh, so you just set up more on it if it's mono psychic. Uh, it can also have a whole host of applications like preventing Milotic from recovering after you hit it on the switch, giving you a free switch to Snorlax, and then you can see how it might work against defensive teams. Uh, yeah, and so those are the primary options. Now for EVs. Standard spread is something like this, because this EV combination is the most efficient way to live Doug Trio. And uh, this speed is important because at plus one, it will hit 300. Um, adjust as appropriate for hidden power bug IVs, like so. But yeah, um, it, 299 is an important speed set to be because that is neutral Salamence. Um, and that's a good portion of the advanced meta. Um, because uh, Salamence is always neutral on Dragon Dance and very often neutral on Choice Band and Mixed. Um, those uh, latter two can run plus speed, but we'll get into that later. Uh, so basically it's going to be outrunning a lot. And the idea is that against the things that are faster, and uh, then you take two Dragon Dances against them. For example, uh, you might think, well, you know, plus speed hundreds, well, what's the deal with that? And the idea is against something like Jirachi, you would prefer to just get two Dragon Dances, because that is when you're really unstoppable. Nothing's going to beat you at plus two speed, which you might remember is a reason for Salak Berry. But yeah, those plus speed 100s can be annoying, uh, picking you off, because... Uh, it's not always possible. Matter of fact, I would say it's often quite uh, difficult to get two Dragon Dances um, safely. So that's the next thing we're going to explore. So the Doug Trio bulk, that's, that's one thing. Um, but some players, they prefer to deal with Doug Trio in other ways. For example, uh, Doug Trio usually doesn't love to switch because it's frail. I mean, it can, but we're, uh, we will get into that later. Um, but yeah, it's usually like, well, I'm going to mess something up, then Doug Trio revenges me, and then I'm going to send in my DD Salamence or Gyarados, and at that point their physical wall will be messed up so I can keep piling it on, and basically having a plan for Doug Trio through offense, or uh, eliminating it early in the game by baiting it out with something like Heracross or Celebi, and, and using either your own Doug Trio or a Porygon 2. So... Uh, some people will get rid of this bulk, and they will just max max, because not having max attack, okay, usually you won't feel it, but sometimes something lives by 1%, and you just want to go nuts. However, the main point is, uh, when you go up to this speed, then, you know, the bulk's not doing that much for you, so you're just going to max attack. And the speed is the main selling point here, because with this, then you will outrun every base 100 uh, after a dance, because uh, it's not just about the... 328 speed base 100s uh, with positive nature, but even things like uh, Moltres, which is gonna, um, well, if you go up to here, then you'll tie it at plus one. And things like uh, slow offensive Celebi, and then there's a bunch of niche Pokemon. Basically, the the point here is those plus speed Zapdoses, Celebes, Jirachis, Salamences, Flygons. 
then yeah, uh, this is uh, what you aim to beat with this. However, you might even want to take it one step further. Gengar uh, normally goes up to 332, just in case you're running um, this spread. It goes up to 332 or 333. I'm pretty sure it's two. Uh, just to outrun this max speed Adam and DD Tar and can do things, do annoying things. Will Will Taunt, Destiny Bond, just hitting you with an attack, whatever. And so sometimes Tarantar will go one step further. Um, jolly. However, you could say, well, you know, why don't I just love him and you know not switch it on Gengar? Um, because if it's going to taunt me, then no, I'm not going to get that second one anyway. But the main reason is offensive teams, which this more offensive version of DD Tar is often found on, is, are, they are often destroyed by Starmie. And sometimes you are going to need to grab that one dance and just be ready to rock. Um, especially because Starmie hits it on the special side, so the bulk needed to take Starmie with, with the... Um, with max uh, special defense, I think it's 389 or 391. Uh, please check the calcs for yourselves. But without, with the perfect um, special defense IV, then it's still this much. So not exactly realistic. Sometimes you need that one dance and to go. Um, yeah, so Jolly is primarily for that. And it also outrun things like Adam and Doug Trio, which... Uh, exists primarily because most Tyranitar are adamant, so they really feel like they're not missing out on much. Uh, yeah, then there's other cool things like before DD outrunning Magneton and Metagross and even like Endeavor Swamper, but uh, that is the primary, primary benefit of Jolly. Okay, so I think we've covered DD Tar. Um, Goes well with spikes, goes well with physical offense stuff, Metagross blowing stuff up, just making sure I didn't forget any uh, options. I mean, you, you'll see some stuff here that can be used, but by and large, it is, uh, the, they're the more fringe options I mentioned earlier. Okay, I don't think I forgot anything. So we're going to move on to the second uh, big, big thing Tarantar does in the advanced metagame, and that is Pursuit. So uh, this comes primarily from the spikes aspect of Advance OU. It started with Fortress wanting to spike and also spin, but getting annoyed to death by Gengar. So enter Tyranitar, who can trap it, and goodbye Gengar. Uh, item is almost always leftovers. Some players run le uh, Lum, but uh, leftovers is standard. While it's nice that uh, Gengar can't just immediately status you and and be annoying, and also uh, the lack of leftovers is noticeable when trying to take repeated hits, such as Gengar's Giga Drain. So, uh, pursue always crunch, pretty much always, because you have to force the issue against Gengar, otherwise, it'll beat you one on one, and there goes the entire uh, point. And then, other moves can kind of be whatever I mean, they can be Fire Blast, they can be Power Grass. It can be Ice Beam, it can be Roar, which is, if you're running it on spikes, it's very useful because uh, it means that you get to um, actually check things, uh, even though you're hitting off the weaker special side. Uh, notably, Snorlax, uh, so on Magneton teams. Against Magneton teams that trap your Skarmory, then uh, you will still have a phaser able to deal with it. For the time being. Uh, crunch spinet drops can also be crucial down the stretch in those matchups, but it's own thing. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, pretty much, you can run whatever move you really want. Some people like to run weird things, like, um, well, you can also run Brick Break uh, and Earthquake if you're running Quiet, like Earthquake for Tranitar and Call My Jirachi and Brick Break if you're really trying to stick it to uh, T-Tar and Snorlax, you don't really mind Jirachi that much, but uh, usually you'll see Modest, because since this set will so often switch into a Gengar will Wisp, you don't want to be like, well, I can't use that move now, because it's useless. So, uh, these sets tend to be primarily special. And the um, the spread here is pretty much, yeah, it's basic, but it, it works. Um, 
it's uh, I mean you can take some special attack out and you know throw in some uh, some spit up or Gengar, but it's, it's usually you want all the juice you can get. And max HP already makes T-Tar really bulky. Worth noting that a max HP T-Tar will always live a plus one earthquake from Salamence. And uh, yeah, that's so. Oh, that's why some people. That's another reason why some people like Ice Beam. Flygon's also annoying potentially. Um, and actually being able to hit Zapdos because when you drop the physical moves, then I mean Blissey is going to annoy you. That's just kind of a given, um, even with Brick Break, because you're not very invested. But uh, especially defensive Zapdos walling you is kind of annoying. And being able to actually hit it with Ice Beam is crucial, because a lot of the teams that this Tyranitar finds itself on, they really struggle to actually hurt uh, T-Tar. Or uh, Zapdos, I'm sorry. Um, well, I said that originally this was uh, a Fortress partner. It got to the point where it was also um, very common alongside Skarmory because Skarmory wants to Toxic Protect everything and, uh, you know, go alongside Spice. It's a really lethal combo, and Gengar gets in the way of that, and Titar just removes it, and then Skarmory's happy. So, um, it's also crucial against Claydol, because Claydol is a thorn in the side of Spike's teams, and with Crunch and Pursuit, then Titar can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. Um, lastly, it can uh, annoy... Uh, defensive Celebi, which is, it's nice because it, defensive Celebi can't really hurt it that much, and Crunch really scares it, and Pursuit and all that. But the primary use is Gengar. Something to know is that sometimes Gengar will be specially defensive, um, and even worse, used alongside Dugtrio so that it survives the Pursuit, um, and then Dugtrio takes care of Titar. Uh, the Doug Trio Transfer relationship is multifaceted for sure. And uh, this is one aspect of it. And so, like Gengar, Will O Wisp on T Tar switch because it's safe, then survive, uh, survive the pursuit, and then Doug Trio, you know, and uh, Gengar lives to grin another day. So, uh, you'll, you're going to have to have some sort of extra plan against uh, Gengar. For example, if Skarmory is letting it in, you might want to invest in Drill Peck, uh, which really secures the trap. And um, it's also good against things like Focus Punch, Heracross, and Claydol, who can be annoying if it's one of those fast offensive sets. Um, and being able to finish off Fortress is nice too. But yeah, um, so that's Pursuit Tar for you. Uh, yeah, I think that's most of it. All right, let's move on to the Mix set. Now, um, Mix is... I put it in Hidden Power Grass first because... Swamp Root is just so crucial um, to deal with for Tyranitar, and if you're running a mix set that can't hurt Pert, then it's kind of like, well, you know, I'm not going to get very far. So, I, um, excuse me, sorry, I zoned out for a second. Anyway, so mixed is just all about doing damage. This is going to be seen on offensive teams primarily and pretty much exclusively. Um, it can be different kinds of offensive teams. Like it can be on physical offense without a mag. It can be on physical offense with a mag, feasibly. Um, you might think, why Fire Blast if I've got a Magneton for Skarmory? And the answer is Metagross. Metagross uh, is very often a victim of Fire Blast. Uh, it can be on special offense because providing sand is so huge. And um, I just realized I didn't go over uh, Sandstorm. Uh oh. Well, uh, no worries. We'll get to that. But yeah, providing sand is huge for those special offense teams. And um, yeah, it also provides a physical way of beating down Snorlax, which uh, gives them some much needed respite against it. So, item Lum. Um, these offensive teams cannot afford the fat pursuit tar for um, for Gengar, and so uh, they've got to hit it at every angle. Uh, worth noting that some people like to use pursuit tar to support a cursed Snorlax, but that is um, that is much rarer. Um, although Snorlax is a lot harder to deal with if it's running Body Slam Earthquake, um, so pursuit tar removing Gengar is obviously really good. 
not as common. Uh, pursuit tar is mostly linked to spikes. Anyway, back to the mixed guy. Lumberry, I mean, okay, it can run lefties because longevity against Zapdos and spikes can be nice. But Lumberry is nice for Skarmory's Toxic, Gengar's Willow uh, even defensive Jirachi spamming status. Um, yeah, so this is one set. Uh, Hidden Bar Grass, Stab, Zapdos, Skarm, and this makes sure Blissey doesn't get on your nerves. However, you may have noticed this does not do so hot against Flygon and Claydol. Hey, those guys are annoying. So, uh, and not to mention, Focus Punch isn't the most reliable thing in the world. So, um, as far as sets go, then this can be almost anything. You know, I'm just clicking some mid-range numbers because that's what it ends up being. Um, with these special attacks, you don't need that much too, and you got your Skarmory beat and speed, your bulky Metagross beat and speed, things like that. So it can go a lot in any direction. You know, it can be rash, mild. Uh, it can even be naughty or lonely. Um, the minus defense is basically saying, "Hey, I'm probably I can't kill Duck Trio in one shot anyway. So what's the point of surviving it? Not to mention, I'm probably not going to be out of its range, given how." Uh, much Tarantar is in the thick of the battle. And uh, so I would rather preserve my ability to eat special attacks while the um, minus special defense option is more, hey, I might want to live Dugtrio. But it's, pri it's primarily, hey, I want to live an Earthquake from Flygon and stuff like that. Um, or from uh, like a Brick Break from Salamence, I guess would be a more poignant example given that this particular set um, doesn't really deal with Flygon well at all, but it does apply to the next set that we're going to look over, and that is this one. This is the newer age mixed tar. And this one is a lot more simple because it's saying no bulk, all special attack speed. Now, some attack is fine. You, I mean, you can do things like, um, you know, this is where the mild versus... Uh, Rash Conundrum pops up more. Let's just assume Mild. But yeah, you can uh, do things like... I mean, you can even do things like Run Lonely just for the extra Brick Break pop against Blissey. But uh, it's often not all that necessary. So, um, yeah, you just want this. You want to... Uh, you're hitting pretty much everything hard. You give up... Well, realistically, you will threaten Zapdos about the same. I mean, it's... Uh, in terms of two KOing it. Now, while Rock Slide, Uninvested Rock Slide isn't going to kill much but the frailest Zapdos anyway. And uh, in exchange, you get great, much more powerful coverage. Oh, if you do this, then do this, because you're not going to be using that defense that much. Yeah, um, Brick Break's extra pop against Snorlax can be crucial too. But uh, that's just. Uh, side note. So yeah, this uh, this is the mixed tar. These are the mixed tars. Here's uh, the physical non D deer. Now this this one takes uh, many shapes. So something you may have noticed thought about in the dragon dance section is well you know gee this uh, this D D tar this bulky one what well, goes on those bulky spikes teams right uh, not just the offensive ones but it's a centerpiece of the bulky ones. Well, you know, how is it a good DD sweeper if it wards um, off all these uh, attackers like Celebi and Snorlax? And uh, that's a very valid question. So the answer to that is, well, sometimes you want to use Transpar because it hits the things hard and it chases them out. But you're right, then it very often doesn't end up using DD or doesn't get the opportunity to DD. Um, and the speed EVs, you know, if it eats a paralysis from something like Snorlax, or even like Porygon 2 or Regice on uh, teams without a defensive spikes teams without a Blissey, um, thinking like Zapdos, uh, Swampert uh, kind of things. Not that that wouldn't necessarily have a Blissey, but those very commonly don't because they've got something like an offensive Jirachi uh, or an Aerodactyl. But to get back to this, then sometimes you're like, hey, those speedy EVs aren't doing anything. Dragon Dance isn't doing anything, so I'm just going to play to Tarantar's strengths, and I'm going to max this the heck out. So the standard set on those teams. Now remember, if you're using this bulky tar on those teams, 
and um, you are facing off against Gengar, you need to have a plan against it, like Blissey, Salibi, Refresh Claydol, Refresh Milotic, something. You know, especially defensive Zapdos. But uh, you are no longer you no longer have that eliminate Gengar button, so that's something to keep in mind. But in reward, this thing does great against uh, those. Well, remember how the pursuit thing doesn't really hurt things much on its own; it's more of a supporting kind of guy. Well, uh, this thing hurts things on its own, especially with the spikes down. But even without the spikes down. So and it's it really plays a Tarantar's strengths. Max HP, max special R, max attack, um, and power. And the extra coverage from Focus Punch is nice against uh, Snorlax that try to get cute with Curse. Uh, laying Hurt down on Swampert on the switch, while remaining bulky and being able to chase out that Celebi and Jirachi and Regiice and Zapdos and Snorlax and uh, what have you throughout the game. So uh, this is... One variant of the physical non D deer. Now the more traditional set um, runs substitute to kind of to really get it up in front of Blissey. That's what she said. Am I right? Um, and uh, avoid status and then really safely lay it down on Pert. Uh, this is also notable because it protects from Doug Trio. Now while Max HP is pretty good against Doug. Then you know Titar takes some damage. Sometimes it, um, sometimes it uh, just can't help but be uh, prone to it. So, but substitute helps out with that. Uh, it also sometimes goes with hidden power grass over um, over bug. And in that case, then usually, well, I'm definitely not killing Doug without a sub now. So I'm just gonna go lonely. So, uh, yeah, that's. It's a more old school approach, but it's uh, definitely viable. Oh, and finally, let me go back to this, but sometimes um, people will run this set, but except instead of a uh, focus punch, then they like to go with roar because it is, while it's not going to do much against Flygon and friends, then it's potentially really, really nasty when you keep dragging things in. For example, the Pursuit thing, if you drag in Gengar, rather than having to switch into it, that's just beautiful. And Roar can do, uh, can really make Blissey uncomfortable. And, you know, they keep trying to switch to their Swamper against your Tarantar with the spikes down. Whoop, they got they got sent flying out. And, uh, oh, sorry, it's jumping all over my words. But, yeah, they got sent flying out with an unanswered 12% or 15% or 25%, depending on how many layers of spikes you have. You might think that doesn't sound all that impressive, but then they have to do it again later, and Pokemon is one on much lower percentages. So, uh, yeah, that is the physical non deer, and finally, the this this behemoth is the Choice Bander. Now, a lot of Pokemon um, eventually have turned to running Protect, which is why this set has lost a bit of its luster. However, when it comes to Switching in on special fatties and immediately scaring them out and smacking anything that comes in, this set is unmatched. Um, I mean, there's stuff like CB Metagross, but, you know, with, uh, with Skarmory resistant to stab and Magneton trapping it and actually switching in, I mean, okay. Uh, admittedly, Doug Trio can eat a plus one, or in this case, a choice band rock slide. However, in terms of uh, dishing out damage, this focus punch... Pound Swamper. It does so much. It does 60%. You might think, well, you know, you know, protect and lefties, and you know, it's getting back 12% before you even get a chance to, um, or actually even more because a switch in minus 60 plus six switch. That's 12. Protect 18. So you have to really make it uncomfortable unless it's uh, like a setup threat like Celebi. But it, point is, you know, you couple that with some spikes. Uh, but a lot of teams don't even need it. It just hits so hard, and it threatens everything so immediately. Uh, and you can you can run it bulky. You can run it back. So you're outrunning the Milotic that runs around here, and the bulky Suicune, and the uh, minus defense Jira or minus speed Jirachi, and other things like Metagross and Skarmory and Claydol. And it's you can run it fast, or you can run some bulk on it. Um, some people like to take out of attack and run, you know, some some Dougie bulk. Um, 
I'm personally not one of those people. I think, and most people, they prefer this massive, massive 600 plus attack stat. But um, you can do a little mix. You can throw some bulk in there. However, most are, most CBTAR are going to be running Milotic and then Bold Suicune because those kind of suck to lose to. So, yeah. All right, those are the main Tarantar sets. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, these guys sound pretty strong. Um, what, what sets it above all the other Pokemon? I mean, Salamence can run a bunch of varied sets that are very powerful. So can Metagross, so can Jirachi, so can Celebi, even Gengar, and he only uses special attacks. Um, except for Explosion, Rare Focus Punch. But for the most part, he just went special attacks. Um, you know, even Swapper can be surprising. What sets this guy above everyone else? And the answer is this, Sandstream. You might think, oh, you know, 6% on non-steel rock grounds, you know, big deal, 6%. I mean, as we just uh, said, then uh, Pokemon gets decided on very low percent chances, or not even chances, low percents uh, quite often. I mean, how often have you seen a game won by like a 1% to 3% survival? That's Sandstream. That's two Sand... Uh, I mean, Sandstream could have killed it twice. Uh, so, yeah, Sandstream... Put it like this. Every single Pokemon in Advance OU is shaped by the fact that it is or is not affected by Sandstream. Now, that might sound like mumbo-jumbo to you, so let me make it clear. We'll go back to the viability rankings now. Every Pokemon on this list has its viability affected in some way by the fact that it is affected by Sandstorm or it is not. And I'm talking serious levels of being affected. For example, if Zapdos recovered health in Sandstorm, that would just be astonishing. It would be incredibly hard to kill. One reason Swamper is considered so unkillable with its protect spamming is because it has uh, it's immune to Sandstorm. Metagross, either same thing, you're hit, you've hit it a couple times and it's still at good health or at least out of range of your attack. Um, but even if it's not running um, leftovers, if it's running Lumberry or Choice Band, it's not getting worn down. It's not losing 6% per turn. One reason that Heracross, um, sometimes, oh, well, okay, a couple variants of Heracross, like sometimes, uh, like an all-out attacker, some defensive teams dance around it knowing it will eventually die just because it's taking 6% per turn, and when those sets put on leftovers, those teams are in so much trouble just because it's not immediately dying, even though it's not as flashy as Choice Band or uh, Lumberry, but it's just as important. For Salicberry Heracross, even teams that are completely wrecked by Salicberry Heracross, quite often they don't lose to it just because of Sandstorm. People put weather moves on things like Magneton that can afford a move slot because they want Sandstorm out of the way. There are entire teams dedicated to removing Tyranitar and um, changing the weather just because that's how, uh, that's how affected Suicune and Snorlax Two of the best Pokemon in the tier are affected by it. Suddenly, Suicune goes from, well, I hit it a couple times with even my physical guys and it goes down. Suddenly, it's unkillable even with Zapdos' Thunderbolts because Calm Mind makes Suicune have no weak. Snorlax goes from, yeah, well, I just kind of wail on it a while and then, I, then it's gone. And then it's like, oh my god, I, I, can't, I can't kill this thing. And even in the face of those teams, Tyranitar shines because of its stats and it's amazing. Um, you often make concessions when you go to such extreme lengths just not to deal with Sandstorm. But uh, you see the point. So, again, every single Pokemon in the tier has its viability shaped by Sandstorm in some way. Blissey can't not recovering leftovers in Sandstorm means Dugtrio violently to it KOs it. Celebi hates dealing with Sandstorm. Jirachi has such an edge over things like Salamence and Celebi. Uh, whichever way it's dealing with it, be it Calm Mind or defensively with the Wish Protect Toxic sets or even Body Slam, because they're on, even if they're not on a timer, they've given something up just to not be on a timer, and they're not recovering. It is. And uh, even something like Ductrio. If Ductrio got affected by Sand, it would, you know, it's uh, 
it's not as easy to trap things. I mean, Celebi uh, just recovers on Like, even if Celebi's Hidden Power Grass comes up short or Blissey's Ice Beam, now well, Sand does the trick, so whatever. Um, yeah, Aerodactyl is primarily so good, not just because its counters are hit by Sandstorm and Spikes, but also because it's immune to them. It spams its Choice Band attacks all game long. Unlike Salamence, who is stronger, but also Sand. Uh, Milotic, if Milotic didn't have to deal with Sand, it would also be unkillable. Flygon, amazing, primarily because it doesn't take Sand. Or Spikes, but Sand, that's a big one. Porygon 2, another Sand casualty. So, um, hopefully that has illustrated the point of just how important Sandstream is. Sandstream shapes advance. It keeps the really strong Pokemon in check. Uh, and it exerts offensive pressure at the same time. It's multifaceted and it's very, very important to the health of a metagame. So, uh, even when Tyranitar, you just feel like it's a slow blob that's getting walled and it's getting um, and it's getting killed by everything on the opposing team. But Sandstorm, Sandstorm is doing more for you than you'll ever. Okay, hopefully now you actually stop and look at it like, wow, Sandstorm was actually really crucial, even though I just. Got my Trantar Dug Trio on turn three. So, all right. Uh, now we will go over some important matchups Trantar faces in advance. And fittingly, some of the most important are the first ones. Gengar, we've already gone over the whole pursuit thing with Dug Trio. Um, and yeah, I think that one's covered. Metagross. Metagross is a common DD tar check. Although, of course, it is weak to Earthquake. So, uh, some prior damage or some spikes go a long way. And sometimes just opening it up, uh, weakening the Metagross for its partner, like Aerodactyl, that can also be crucial. Um, and uh, the bulky Tarantar spread, the 16 HP, 120 defense one that lives Dugtrio, that also has a good chance, a very good chance, somewhere uh, around the 70% mark, I believe, to live a max attack um, Metagross Meteor Mash, non-choice banded, of course. So sometimes uh, even Mash isn't going to do the job. So, um, yeah, the mix sets often, uh, well, I mean, there are some speedy CB Gross out there, so you might want to hit them on the switch because they're losing bulk. But uh, if you're running a mix set, and, uh, those bulky offensive teams, and you're thinking, hey, this, this is a prime opportunity for Metagross to come and do some damage, Fire Blast uh, lets them in. Um, but it's not always as simple because Swampert might also come in and then draw the HP Grass for Metagross. Pivoting is a crucial part of advanced offense because uh, things are a lot stronger than you'd think. You know, the stereotype is, oh, the further back you go, the weaker everything is. But things hit hard, um, harder than you'd realize without um, all the, you know, life orbs and whatever. Um so yeah, you're going to have to pivot a lot. And Tarantar is often integral in that, but we'll get to it. So yeah, Swapper and the matchups are fairly straightforward. Um, you know, Dragon Dance, is, it wants Swamper down or weakened. It's got, it can do the leechy double-edged thing. It can be the, do the uh, HP Grass thing. It can let something else smack Swampert up for it. So then it's all clear or clearer than it was before. Pursuit. HP Grass sometimes mixed. Pert is like it, the prime target of going mixed. In addition to breaking stuff like Scarm Bliss, Pert, Cores, uh, since Gengar isn't exactly a counter, even if you're not running a dark move. So, um, I should also mention that you know you can run mixed sets and they combine things like these to your heart's content. Like some guys run Crunch Focus Punch. So once you think, oh, it's a special set, I can just switch my Bliss into it all day, and then you just get smacked. So that's the um, that's what I was talking about earlier, when you want to um, just uh, mix and match what you really need with your Trantar set once you really get a Grass Monitor. Anyway, so that's a big one. Speaking of pivoting, um, Trantar's uh, neutrality to certain types is just as important as its weaknesses and resists. For example, being neutral to Zapdos is huge. Uh, and small secret here, Thunderbolt from a Stab Electric type is actually stronger than super effective HP Grass. So for all intents and purposes, yes, it is neutral to Zapdos. 
But uh, even something like uh, switching, pivoting is important for, uh, let's say, you check for the HP ice with your Flygon. Uh, you, you check for HP ice by going to Flygon and then going to TTAR. That, that kind of thing when you don't have a hard counter. Because if you're running offense, and you should run offense because it's good and it's um, powerful, and it makes you a good Pokemon player to learn how to uh, maneuver around these tough defensive cores and offensive threats. Yeah, if you're running offense, you're not going to be able to hard counter things, and the pivot aspect of that is very crucial. So that's a big one. Um, but I have Zapdos versus Pursuit Tyranitar is also a... Um, and its teammates is also a mechanic we've gone over. Um, Skarmory, I mean... Uh, Skarmory is both a great Tyranitar partner and kind of a kind of a not so good stop. Um, it's most of its sets, as you've noticed, are pretty annoyed by it. However, if it gets a toxic off against a non-Lumbarian, then it's it can definitely be um, annoying. Um, but yeah, I feel like most of these are fairly self-explanatory, so I'm gonna skip to the crucial ones. Uh, the blissy ones are yeah, like the leftovers DD or um, I think it, it kind of gets old when you're DD Tar gets sat on by a toxic Blissey, or at least doesn't even completely threaten it out. So that's uh, my focus punch is so nice, uh, along with um, bulk, and so you're not uh, relying on wasted speed EVs. Anyway, Celebi is an interesting one. Um, SD Pass Celebi Swords Dance often runs HP Fighting. Just uh, because Tarantar is annoying, but then it gives up coverage against Gengar because it wants Shadow Ball, so it also wants Recover, so it can repeatedly do this against um, uh, Bulky Waters, so I, I figured that was worth mentioning. But yeah, um, Offensive Celebi with Giga Drain is actually surprisingly annoying because you'd think, oh, well, Tarantar is good against Celebi, or does well, sorry. Um, but if you're not running HP Bug, you're just going to get massacred by the offensive set, so that's something to consider. Um, Another uh, benefit of the Vortex physical set is that it's got the bulk and the coverage to deal with the most important threats. Also extends to Jirachi. It's not Earthquake Jirachi can make life pretty miserable for non-EQ R, well, uh, non-Roar too, I suppose, uh, in terms of like setup variants, uh, like white, uh, Wish and or Sub Calm Mind. Uh, Fire Punch Birds are also very annoying. Uh, Celebi is also, but yes, yeah, so, um, and like the defensive sets with HP Grass, they aren't so bad um, as long as you keep your tar in good condition. Uh, but you're generally going to want to bring that tar into a recover, a forced recover from whatever Celebi switched on, you know, your Suicune, your Swamper, your Snorlax, your Zapdos. So, because uh, that makes it a lot more threatening. Switching into the Leaf Seed, or, or Psychic, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, Psychic is good to switch into too, but switching into the Leaf Seed, or God forbid the HP Grass, is just not a fun time. Uh, especially if you don't have lefties. I mean, Tarantar's not a bad interim measure just to kind of check Celebi out, and, you know, maybe get your Salamence in on the Giga Drain, which it's pretty uh, obligated to go for. But yeah. Um, Suicune is... This is an interesting matchup. So a lot of people say... Oh, well, you know, advance is nonsense because, you know, you have your hard counter Suicune to your DD Tar and, you know, it gets flinched and Rock Slide flinches are the devil. And the uh, reason I think that's nonsense and so do most good advanced players is because Suicune just doesn't take plus one Rock Slide very well. That's what, another reason Sand is so crucial. If there was no Sand and, you know, bold Suicunes were regularly getting, you know, beaten by DD Tar, then yeah, that'd be nonsense. But that's not the case. Um... Suicune just takes too much. I mean, think about it like this. Try countering a choice band Tarantar with Suicune. It just won't work. So, because the rock slide just hit too hard. So, uh, I mean, throw spikes in, you can just forget about it. So that's why water does not necessarily mean rock counter. I mean, it can, it can definitely be a check. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, Suicune is not getting O-coded by T-Tar anytime soon. But... Um, it's you might want to invest in like your Metagross, your Dugtrio, even a second water. You know, Swampert uh, runs offense a lot these days, um, which I should probably go over. Um, offensive Swampert, like the Endeavor sets, uh, you're gonna want to be careful of those. But even like the uh, offensive Focus Punch variants, um, which are pretty much Hydro EQ, Ice Beam, Focus Punch, and you know Max Special Attack and lots of speed. So. Uh, when running your mixed Tarantars, you're going to want to go faster than ever because those guys get pretty fast. Plus speed is even an option on uh, the Ice Beam 
uh, Brick Break, Fire Blast, HP Grass makes TARS now because Endeavor Pert's annoying and um, outrunning other TARS is really good. It's, it's really crucial um, in some games. Like the offense on offense slugfest, that's just a game changer. Uh, yeah, so that's we're going to go down to Snorlax. Now, Snorlax um, often runs on offensive sets. It likes to run Focus Punch to really wail on Skarmory. And it also likes to run Earthquake just because Metagross and Titar and even Jirachi are annoying. So it's not as easy to... I mean, okay, your ideal scenario is that your opponent is running Body Slam, Shadow Ball, Curse Lax, that never gets paralyzed, and he doesn't have a Duck Trio, and you've got a, like a physical T-Tar, and you can just wail on him forever. But it's, it's going to take some work than that. So you're going to want to um, mix it up. So you're, Otherwise, Snorlax just uses EQ versus Zapdos every time, and your Metagross T-Tar get nailed, and they're not necessarily going to be able to bridge the gap and do some damage back because the other guys also got some healthy Pokemon to pivot into, so you really got to be careful. Snorlax can potentially make uh, T-Tar's life very uneasy just because it seems like T-Tar just dominates Snorlax so hard. On the other hand, yeah, T-Tar kind of dominates Snorlax really hard, like mixed uh, sets against a combo of T-Tar, Gengar, and Skarm, which is incredibly common, then it's, it's a mess. It's horrible. Uh, Snorlax just feels like dead weight, and it's just inviting the other guy to just completely set up and destroy you without repercussion. So, um, yeah. Like with most things, T-Tar has a back and forth um, with Snorlax. And uh, that's how most interactions in, in this tier go, honestly. It's uh, the beauty of advance. But yeah, I'm just uh, trying to list some things to watch out for. Uh, Salamence, T-Tar, and Mens, I mean, sometimes T-Tar... I think the extent of T-Tar Mensa interactions that can be considered common is... Okay, there are three, I think. One is T-Tar is uh, Mensa pivoting into a T-Tar HP Grass to scare it out, but it's also got to be banded because otherwise it's not going to kill it in one shot. Uh, another is when T-Tar's gotten DDs and Salamence is desperately intimidating it. And the third is when T-Tar remains in range for Mensa's plus one EQ and uh, revenge kills it, prevents it from sweeping. Uh, fun fact, some Salamence began running DD Brick Break just for bulky Tar and also Blissey, which is also infuriatingly somehow a decent check. But yeah, DD Brick Break is a thing primarily because of bulky T-Tar. Doug Trio, that's, that's a whole, whole thing. Uh, without Ice Beam, a lot of T-Tar will not be able to kill Doug Trio in one shot. Because, uh, I mean, unless you're spamming, unless you manage to hit it with a max attack earthquake from this guy, then Doug Trio will usually be able to survive it. And, uh, yeah, so Ice Beam, or Focus Punch, obviously. Uh, Doug Trio, I would say that with the proliferation of Frailer DD Tars and mixed Tyranitars, then uh, and bulky Pursuit Tars that can't hit Doug. And Doug has never been closer to a true T Tar switch in than it is now. And I, I don't see that changing anytime soon because the reason those sets have risen to the forefront is because of how good they are um, against the greater metagame. So, uh, yeah, that's something to consider. Um, you know, maybe you want to. Start bulking your T-Tar out a little, but you also got to remember why you're running that speed in the first place. You know, the Faz Zapdos, the Starmie, the, the uh, plus speed band bands, things of that nature. Starmie, now the, here is a fun interaction. For a while, there was a point in advance where it felt like every other game you saw a DD Tar sweep get halted by Starmie. Or um, it gave it the second DD it needed because Hydro sucks. But yeah, that's a... Um, Bulky Starmie is really, it's strange. It's not really a good T-Tar counter, but it Surf does a lot more than you'd think. It's deceptively strong for a, a supposed weak bulky water. It's the same thing with Milotic, actually. So you gotta, um, yeah, you gotta uh, be careful around those, but you're not really gonna see many of those. The real problem is um, offensive Starmie comes in and just smacks things. And the smacks T-Tar really hard. It, uh, it's very close to an Elko. Even when T-Tar has bulk, it's pretty much always in fear of dying upon taking pretty much any damage. So it's an interest. And uh, it's uh, it's the main reason, I would say, for the Jolly DD Tar outbreak. Starmie is just that devastating to move off. It seems that T-Tar often angers and is a crucial part of. 
Uh, Magneton, fun fact, um, when a standard Skarm Bliss, Gengar, Swampert, Titar team has had uh, its Skarmory Magneton, they very often will go to Titar immediately after because they want to actually kill the Magneton. And Blissey, you know, Toxic Protect, and then it gets all messy because unless you're running Fire Blast, you're not killing it in one shot. So it's And then Magneton very often gets a, a parting T-Bolt off on it. So um, that's something I think is worth noting. Uh, other than that, they don't really get in each other's way much. Um, Magneton usually outspeeds Titar. Um, they, they run a lot of speed. But that's why uh, that's why the plus speed mixed tar is taking off. Claydol. Um, Claydol is both a an infuriatingly hard to take out wall for Titar, and simultaneously um, bait for it to do whatever it wants. Like the DD HP bug set with bulk just gets just totally rolls over Claydol. But like the DD taunt sets, you're never killing those. I mean, you're not beating it down with spikes. Um, you're not beating down with repeated attacks. It heals immediately from your weak attacks, and um, it's so uh, yeah. Claydol is something you got to keep in mind with Titar, especially. Aerodactyl tends to um, Aerodactyl tends to revenge kill Titar sometimes, but if it's like uh, it also sometimes provides bait. Oh, uh, an important Salamence. Um, that reminds me, an important Salamence thing that also applies to Arrow. When they are locked in choice banded attacks like HP flying or in Arrow's case double edge, the pursuit tar sometimes manages to pursue them, and uh, that really helps bring them down. Like Salamence likes to come in on defensive Celebi recovering, and now I'm going to scare something, and you don't really think, well, T tar is a, a men's switch, and that's another reason why sometimes you want to go for the earthquake with CV men's, provided there's no Skarmory in the picture, because not only does it hit Swapper basically just as hard as hidden power flying, it also smacks Jirachi, Metagross, and T tar. Uh, that's something to consider. Uh, yes. So does that with Aerodactyl, which is huge because most of those... A reason um, Aerodactyl is so scary to the defensive teams that uh, Swamp or uh, Pursuit Tar usually finds itself on is because it sticks around the entire game. I mean, it doesn't really want to switch into attacks when it's not getting worn down by sand or spikes. And T-Tar's Pursuit is one of the few ways you can actually force damage on it. Um, yeah. So there's that. Nero also either finishes uh, finishes DD Tar sweep or gives it the second DD. Um, it's, yeah, very, so I, I think that's accurate. Some players have uh, taken to running Hidden Power Fighting on... Um, this is very rare. This is like fringe, the sort of fringe stuff I said I wouldn't go too much into. But some people uh, ran HP Fighting on Arrow just for the, for the DD Tar check. And also, surprisingly, uh, Smacking Blissey. So. And uh, Snorlax. So um, there you have that in case you want to try that out. Uh, Jolteon, Jolteon with T Wave. Jolteon's uh, T Wave is another way those offensive teams tried to, you know, keep DD Tar scared. Because, well, uh, another thing about the Metagross matchup, a lot of teams are like, well, you know, my um, either my Swampert's also offensive, and uh, my Swampert's offensive, or I don't have a Swampert, and I'm using Metagross because it can hold it off just enough for me to get my offense without being completely counter-swept by DD Tar, and a Jolteon T-Wave is a big part of making sure that Metagross is the only sufficient real defense against it, because at least, uh, even if my Jolteon goes down, at least T-Tar won't be taking me out. And Lumberry is another reason um, Jolteon is... Uh, Lumberry is another... Uh, Jolteon T-Wave is another reason for Lumberry. Although, unlike Zapdos, you cannot get two DDs on Jolteon, because it will still outspeed you. Um... Wait, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, it's uh, the reason you can't DD on Jolteon. My bad. Uh, Heracross. Heracross obviously obliterates the hell out of T-Tar. On the other hand, a DD Tar is obviously going to just get smacked. Um, Heracross can pivot into HP Grass and like Brick Break and stuff. I mean, it doesn't want to take too many attacks, like even like uh, an Earthquake. Will, unless it's got leftovers, in which case, another, another example of Sandstorm being so crucial. Um... Yeah, uh, yeah. DD. A lot of teams uh, like to give Heracross just a little bulk, just so it can have that chance of living DD's hard rock slide. Because again, teams are frail; they need to get every instance of uh, security against DD Tar they can. That is how big a threat it is. You must respect it. Moltres actually loves T Tar because Sandstorm means that 
either your your water is swampert, meaning HP grass is just gonna kill it, or it's going to ha the water is going to have its leftovers nullified. So its will o wisp and HP grass are going to leave a mark with spikes down uh, against something like Milotic or Tweakoon. You know that's uh, another example of how crucial lefties is. And Moltres isn't really, I mean, sure it'd like to have its leftovers. And I would even say that it is affected by it because it doesn't, it can't take multiple, um, multiple hits from like Metagross Meteor Mash, for example. Kind of like Gengar would be able to take multiple hits from Mixmens, even if it walks into Dragon Claw. But um, even something like um, HP Grass means that next time Dragon Claw will cleanly to it KO it. Um, things like that. So it's another example of sand. But yeah, it's, it's generally, generally appreciates the sand. Um, of course, it also, in terms of T-Tar, then, you know, Will-O-Wisp not doing so good, even if it's faster, uh, not doing so good because it'll give a uh, DD-Tar, a love DD-Tar to the free DD, and that's why some Moltres like, one reason Moltres likes to run Roar, uh, it racks up spikes on Blissey, but it also prevents T-Tar from setting up on it. Remember, whatever it takes to make sure that DD-Tar does not sweep you, worth considering. Um... And it doesn't like Pursuit Tar either, because Pursuit Tar isn't as scared of HP Grass. Uh, it's got the bulk. Pursuit, I mean, on the, on the bright side, Pursuit isn't going to, to KO it. But um, it, it's still got to run uh, afraid of Rock Slide. You must respect Rock Slide. If there's one thing about T-Tar, you really don't want to... If you're going to be taking a chance on a set, you better have a good reason. You be, it better be educated, not be like, no, oh, I just don't feel like he would run Rock Slide on Pursuit Tar, you know? Because he totally could, and it would be totally valid. Um, just like you, uh, in the team builder, you would respect uh, DD Tar, even if you don't think your opponent, for whatever reason, would run a DD Tar, which, by the way, is stupid. He very well easily could, or they very well easily could, just because it's a good Pokemon, no matter what their statistics and trends say. Uh, it's not like it's some obscure threat he brought up from the vault of obscure nonsense. But uh, yeah, I think that point is made clear. Um, yeah, now if you have confirmed or like if you're really certain based on um, reasons like I don't think he's Rock Slide because his team needs Ice Beam to deal with Flygon or uh, whatever, then yeah, sometimes against Pursuit Tar you can stay in an HP Grass and be on your way, but something to consider. Milotic. Uh, Milotic is like Suicune in that it is a prime reason why waters are not necessarily rock counters. Because it gets really smacked by those rock slides. Of course, its surf actually hits hard. Um, one thing about Bold Suicune with that 206 special attack stat, sometimes it fails to 2 it KO max HP T-Tar with leftovers. Milotic doesn't have any such problems. Um, Milotic is going to hit your T-Tar really hard if it uh, if it comes to that. So, uh, yeah, it's a reason why CB-Tar likes to run speed. And it is also... Probably the best thing you could have against a mixed Tyranitar. You're not going to be scratching it much with this. So if you're running that kind of mixed uh, offense stuff with that Tyranitar variant, you must have a plan for Milotic. You are going to have to abuse it really, really hard. Otherwise, it will just sit on your men's T-Tar Armada for days. And uh, with the mixed offensive Swamper that exists now, too. Flygon, we've gone over that dynamic. Um... Yeah, Choice Band uh, Flygon is also a prime Pursuit Tar partner because Gengar is really annoying, and you don't want to run HP Ghost because that means you don't have HP Bug, and hitting Celebi is really important. So, uh, yeah, and CB Tar and T Flygon is also uh, it loves T Tar Sand. It makes it hit Sting even against things that wall it, like Milo and P two. You know, force the recover because next time it's going to get rough. Uh, earthquake hits even like Swampert decently. Um, yeah, it's both a good partner and a good check, except for Ice Beam. Uh, which, again, if Flygon was not a thing, you probably would never see Ice Beam on T-Tar. It, Flygon is just that much of a problem. I mean, it's got good coverage, but Flygon's the main reason. So, uh, yeah, Flygon is... A big deal. And uh, it's also one of the plus speed base 100s that T-Tar decided it was tired of getting outrun by after a single dance. Uh, especially since the choice band one would just put T-Tar in the grade. So, 
Uh, Cloyster is an interesting um, relationship. It's generally now if you see Cloyster uh, and Titar, Titar is going to be either DD or one of the mixed sets. And that's pretty much the only relationship those two have. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you could technically say Cloyster Bates and Gengar, so you could use Pursuit Tar, but generally if you're using Cloyster, you're going more the offensive route, and you're not going to be Pursuiting uh, Gengar like that. So, uh, yeah, they don't really face off much. So, Bori, um, Bori likes to spin on Skarm, and for it to not have its spin destroyed by Gengar, then you have Granitar, and you also got to watch out for Dunk Trio. And uh, Bori also tends to compromise teams defensively because while it can provide spin, it also doesn't really counter much. It, if it has Earthquake, it counters a lot of Metagross variants, meaning like Leftovers, EQ, HP, Grass. Because, yeah, like, Bori just doesn't do enough, you know? Like, it, it can't have all the moves it wants. It wants EQ and Explosion, but it also wants HP Ghost because being walled by Gengar is so bad and... You know, without uh, HP Ghost or Bug, and it's going to lose to Clay at all, and it's just uh, he's Earth. Yeah, it's it's a mess. So um, Titar helps out a lot with that, and yeah, I mean, Fori um, needing Pursuit Tar so badly is partially what led to Skarm um, overtaking it because even if your Pursuit Tar, you know, doesn't kill the Gengar and get um, then get uh gets duck trio and skarmory can still be a massive massive threat whereas fortress is kind of like well gengar exists so i i suck so yeah uh p2 uh not really a t-tar check except sometimes against my experience it's not really a great switch but with t-wave it can be really annoying for teams that um the mixed tars find itself on um and it was also a reason that T when T when Porygon two became big on those calm mind teams that really wanted Doug Trio dead, um, then or just offensive teams that wanted Doug Trio dead in general, then that was a reason T Tar started running Taunt again because it would be like, well, it's not really a great DD Tar switch, but it unlike my loading and Sweet who need to hit two serves, it only needs one T wave to be ruined, and that's another reason for Alum as well. So, uh, yes, Porygon two is not. Not really a check, but um, a big reason why those... Uh, it's like Milotic, in a way. Uh, you're really going to need to abuse it hard if you're running one of those mixed offenses. It's a, It, alongside Milotic, is a big reason why Snorlax is really important on them. Finally, Gyarados. Gyarados is kind of like Ments, in that t Tar sometimes stays alive to check it, except it's a lot weaker than Ments. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the only relationship. I mean, Gyarados also intimidating uh, t Tar is also good for... It's got good synergy alongside Metagross, so that Metagross isn't eating the full force of an Earthquake, and it can go back uh, to Gyarados potentially for even more Intimidate, because you can't, you easily won't be DDing on a Metagross. So yeah, uh, we're gonna skip these guys because I don't think it's as important. Um, just yeah. Uh, so I think we're gonna call it there. I hope this gave you an accurate picture of what Tyranitar does in Advanced Overused, and I um, hope to continue this series with um, with other Pokemon and strategies in the Advanced OU tier. So if there's uh, something you really want to see before anything else, like, hey, do Metagross, or do why Calmine Celebi sucks, or something like that, then uh, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.